What's up YouTube? Coming at you today with my review for Star Trek Online being played on PlayStation 4 of course and this is a game that came to PC about six years ago uh, it just got ported over and it's coming as more of a complete package so it gets all of the story DLC and content that's been slowly released over the years um, over on PC so this is a free-to-play game which I'll just start off by saying I'm not a huge fan of free-to-play um, I actually could say that I loathe free-to-play. I would so much rather just pay $60. Fuck, I'd even pay $100 for this game and just get all of the content and have it all there instead of being nickel and dimed. So on the plus side, at least, this game can be completed without having to spend any money. And I tested this out myself. Um, I did complete the entire story missions and... I guess like the campaign of the entire game you could call it without buying anything so just with the free stuff that you're given so um, I guess that's kind of a double-edged sword though because then it means I mean since the devs aren't really getting a whole lot of money until the end of the game really only for people who've made it that far and really want to invest in the title it just means that if you do want to buy something everything is extremely expensive like I've never seen um, uh, free-to-play content that this, that's this expensive. Now granted, I don't really play a lot of free-to-play games, um, so maybe I'm not the best one to judge that, but 60 uh, for $60 you could get like one ship, maybe a couple lockbox keys, and some character uh, customization things. And that's a lot of money for just a few things. Um, the the uh, tier six ships are thirty bucks. That's just insane <laughs> to me, anyway. So by all accounts, I really shouldn't even like this game. Um, it's not really the type of genre that that I'm into. Um, I'm not a big fan of all the micromanagement stuff that you have to do. But I mean, I just I love this game. I can't believe how many hours I spent into it. I've just been completely immersed. And I really think it's just because it's a Star Trek game, like. I'm a huge Trekkie, and I mean, let's be honest, when was the last good Star Trek game? The last one I could think of was Star Trek Voyager Elite Force, which I played on PC, and actually I'm looking at, I have the game case for that on PS2, it's on my shelf right now, it's the only PS2 game that I have left. So that right there, I'll show you how much of a complete nerd I am when it comes to Star Trek. So I mean, I really, really, really enjoy this game. I'm also not going to fanboy all over it though because I know what makes a good game and in my opinion um, this game is just really lacking in certain places so I'm going to just start off with the gameplay the ship combat is awesome top notch probably the best on console in fact the only other game I can really think of right now that comes close would have to be Rebel Galaxy which I really enjoyed. I actually platinumed it a couple months ago. I think it was free on PS Plus. Um, so it's it's like that game, only just ten times better. The ship combat is excellent. Um, so, but the other half of the game is is like a third person ground combat, um, which just just really falls on its face, especially compared to the ship combat and how good it is. It was. Coming to the point um, early on in the game where I'd see a, a ground combat section coming up, like I'd have to beam down to the planet, and I'd just kind of get this dread, like, oh god, okay, let me just go through this as fast as I can so I can get back into space and do the fun stuff, right? So, it's just, it's boring, and the the quests are just like basic fetch quests, just like the same thing over and over again, boring, repetitive not that fun. Now I am having a lot more fun with it since I'm towards um, the end of the game so I have uh, high level gear and stuff. I'm not being wiped out like every every 10 seconds and it's getting a bit better. Um, I would definitely say that the ground combat is um, the worst part of this game and the space combat is definitely the best. So thankfully it's not an even split. It's not like 50% space combat and 50% ground combat. It leans more onto the space combat side, which I think definitely um, it helps the game quite a bit. It seems like the developers kind of know that the ground combat isn't that great. It kind of feels like, 
I don't know, it kind of just feels like an add-on, like something that was just tacked on. So they could say it's like, oh, it's the whole Star Trek experience, right? You have a away team and you get to go down to the planet, so we have to put that in there because can you just have a Star Trek space game? Well, you can because we've had them before, but they haven't been that great. So this game tries to like inc include all of it. But if they could have had the space combat um, in it the way that this game has, and then maybe they could have done like a first-person thing with like Star Trek Voyager Elite Force, like how that game was structured. I mean, that would have been awesome. That would have been oh my gosh, it would have been so great. So let's move on to graphics here. The uh, the space stuff once again, it looks great. I mean, the way the sunlight reflects off your ship and the particle effects like flying through nebula the, all that stuff looks really good and uh, of course the ground stuff just <laughs> doesn't look that great I was there were so many times where I like run up to a rock and I'm just staring at it waiting for the texture to load like is it gonna even fucking show up it just looks like a kid took a gray Crayola and just smeared it all over the screen like the stuff on the ground is horrible it really really does look like a PS2 game and it reminds me a lot, actually, of the original Mass Effect. So, once again, space stuff awesome. Ground stuff, not too great. Definitely outdated. I mean, it is a six-year-old game. Definitely shows its age. So, uh, sound. Uh, another area where it's really awesome in space and really bad on the ground. It's almost like this is two separate games. It's really strange. Um... The torpedoes, phasers, everything in space, uh, the sound of a singularity core inside of a Romulan warbird going critical and exploding is really top notch. It's awesome. It's very gratifying. And then on the ground, like little pew pew of lasers and stuff is just so dumb. It just doesn't fit with the game. It's not satisfying. It's boring. It's annoying hearing the same freaking laser sound over and over and over again. And there were some uh, missions where I actually had to turn the sound completely off because something was horribly wrong. Like, I don't know if you guys have ever been in a really old car and turned up the stereo, like, really loud, and it's just, like, they're vibrating and just sounds horrible, like, blown-out speaker sound. I don't know how, like, how that got through Q&A. Like, I, I literally could not listen to it because it was, like, hurting my head. So, eh, sound. I mean, I have to say, like, this game is pretty average, and the space stuff is great, the ground stuff is bad, and you put it together, and you just get kind of an average package. So, again, sound is um, just average. Uh, voice acting is pretty bad. Um, there is a lot of nostalgic uh, stuff going on, though, with the voices, because there's a lot of voice actors that show up from the TV shows, um, especially Star Trek Voyager, which is awesome for me, because that is my favorite Star Trek. But, I mean, even... Even they just sound okay. So, voice acting is okay. So the one thing I would say that this game really does right is it really brings the Star Trek universe to life. And anybody who's a Trekkie is going to be recognizing a lot of things throughout the missions that you're going to remember from the TV shows. Um, characters, uh, set pieces, ships, uh, aliens. I mean, just... There's never been a Star Trek game that really just has like everything from the Star Trek universe in one package. So that's really cool and you know as a Star Trek fan I love it. I think it um, makes me a little bit uh, more able to kind of overlook some of the issues of the game and the game definitely has a lot of issues. I mean just a lot of bugs that I don't think that the average gamer is going to be able to suffer through. I mean the game definitely gets better the longer you play, but I just can't imagine many people are going to make it towards the end. This game, it just feels like it tries to deter you. It's almost like it doesn't want you to get to the end. I don't understand, like, why, like, even at the very beginning of the game, through the tutorial, the tutorial is like, one, it's like the worst tutorial that I've ever played. It doesn't tell you anything. It's confusing. It's long. It's obnoxious. It took me two days just to get through the freaking tutorial. And when you have to go on a Google because you're stuck on the tutorial because some piece of text doesn't load or something random like that, and that's definitely not good. So you know only the hardcore fans are going to be able to stick through to the end of the tutorial. And it's a shame because the game really does get a lot better the longer that you play. But I just can't imagine... Um, that at least half of the audience isn't just completely lost because it's frustrating. There's so many times that if this wasn't a Star Trek game, I would have just given up. Like, 
why why do I have to suffer through this horrible tutorial just to get to the main game? Like, come on, this is the very first thing in a game. You, if you want to put your best foot forward, then you really should do that at the beginning of the game. So this leads me into the next thing I want to talk about, which is controls. So obviously this game was on the PC, and the PC keyboard has a lot of commands, and trying to condense those down into a controller is a challenge, for sure. And this is a part where the tutorial fails again to teach you the intricacies and the most important things about the game that uh, I had to end up just figuring out for myself, and I don't know if I'm sure it was in the tutorial, but because the tutorial was so long and boring, uh, that I didn't pick any of it up. So I just had to get on Google when I couldn't figure out why I was getting destroyed before I realized that I could auto queue all of my powers so I wasn't having to go through five different weapon wheels in the game. So the controls are okay. I mean, the real problem here is just the game not explaining it to you very well. Um, so that pretty much brings me to the end. This is a really hard game to rate because I don't feel like you can even put it into the same category as the AAA games that are coming out now. I mean, this game is coming out alongside Battlefield 1 and um, even older games that are just a lot better. I feel like this has to be rated more as almost like a PS2 classic type of game. The thing is... I really, really, really want to give this game like a high rating because of how much I love it, but I don't think it's really that great of a game. And the only thing really holding it together is the space combat and the fact that it's a Star Trek game and we don't have very many Star Trek games. And oh, I just really want a good Star Trek game, but I just this is just the best that we have for right now. So in the end, guys, I'm going to give this game a 6 out of 10. It's good. It's not great. I definitely recommend checking it out since it's free, but I just really don't think that this is going to be a game that many people are going to be able to stick with.